James, thank you so much for joining us here in Barcelona. Is it nice to be back amongst your peers? Uh, look, it's lovely to see people again. Obviously, with the constantly changing approach to COVID, we have to be very fluid, but it's great to have an audience. Now, one of the topics that we're going to be talking about a lot this week is that around the challenges of, of good talent retention and that mm. being a risk in itself. Tell me what that means at the moment and, and what the position is. So we hear a lot about uh, kind of the great resignation and what we've typically seen is that in the lead up to Christmas, typically if I look across all of our businesses, the degree of turnover reduces. You expect people, frankly, to hang on in financial services till they get their bonuses in, in April. And we just aren't seeing that. It's just continuing. And so it, it is a real issue about retaining and developing talent. And it's because of people's, you know, comp our employees have just completely changed some of their, their views on the type of organization they want to work in, how they want to be led, and, and their views. And so we're having to really be very adaptive in how we engage our employees in the same way as we're having to be adaptive in how we engage our customers. And that has changed radically. And, and, and that's because of COVID. We're now sort of coming up to the second anniversary of when it really hit the world globally, yeah. this pandemic. What would you say is the position now? And what are the key challenges still around that going forward? For, well, let's break it down. So for our, our employees and for our teams, it is, it's, it's where they work, how purposefully they are led. And so what we've seen is that, you know, people have got used to a different working environment. We're still in a situation, and you remember that I'm now working for an organization that is solely focused on Asia and Africa. And so our teams are working in environments where there's still very varied levels of vaccine uptake. So across Asia and Africa, right now, the end of November, uh, it was 57, 58% first vaccine. Now you've got some markets that are very highly vaccinated and some that, that are not. But it means as well that if you're putting your safety of your customers and your employees first, then you need to have a very different employment proposition. But also if you've got very experienced teams that are now working from home, they need to have a different type of leadership because there isn't the same community spirit that there was that you would get naturally in an, in an organization. And if you've been working away from home for two years or you're joining the organization, you may never have met the people you're working with. And so that has changed how we, uh, how we engage with our customers and so, sorry, with our employees. So we've done things like, um, we've done the usual things like surveys, pulse surveys to try to get a sense, but we've done a lot more engagement where we're seeking opinions and seeking views on specific subjects. And I'd say there are three things that kind of typify it. One is we've been very clear on trying to engage people on our purpose. And so that if that inspires members of, uh, of the team, that gives them a sense of what it is we're, we're, we're trying to do, rather than focusing on technical expertise, being more uh, purpose-led. The second is really uh, our values and just being really clear on that and bringing it out. And, and the third really is about kind of, or I would describe it as vulnerab vulnerability, uh, but being really clear on, on not only um, providing opportunities for people to tell us what's gone wrong, but to be very clear on what, what needs to change. And so one of the areas that people have been very focused on in that realm has been on the skills that they want. So they can see that digitalization has exploded. Right? And so that can create some fear if you're not feeling that, you know, my job's going to be impacted or the way that I interact with customers is going to change. And so there's a real need and desire for reskilling and re-engagement. So key areas around the way people work, uh, the training you offer, and you, you talked about purpose, and I wanted to ask you about that, because obviously one of the things that people say now is that the next generation of talent are gonna look for that in companies and want to work for those companies. Do you now see it as a financial institution's responsibility to be putting themselves out there as people that can be a real force for social good? And will that be important to that talent retention? I, th I, think, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think it's critical. But if you step back about not just our employees, but our customers. So at Pru is to help people get the most out of life. What, what does that mean? It means, it means different things to all of our customers. But one thing that is clear is we're no longer selling you an insurance product. Right? So the day that, that, that just having the very best product at any one point in time is no longer enough. That's not sustainable. What we need is a relationship. And 
typically in insurance, you know, you, you were sold a product at, at some point in time. Um, you, you probably get an annual statement uh, that you may or may not read. And you only really care in a moment that matters, when you have a claim, when something goes wrong. And so if you think about the engagement with the customer, that's, that's not a great customer uh, engagement profile. And I would say that's typical of traditional insurers. And I think what, what COVID and other things have changed is moving from that transactional model very much more onto a relationship model that has to be built on trust. It has to be built on an understanding, which means you, you've got to have a much uh, better engagement model. And what we found is that our employees and our teams realize that. Now, at Pru, we've done this through a product called Pulse, uh, but, but lots of different companies have done it in very many different ways. I think this is an industry phenomenon, not, a, uh, not just a, a, a unique to Pru. Because I think if we don't change our approach, you know, Honestly, the, the, the industry is going to be taken over by, by other players. And is an event like this in Barcelona where you can come together as an industry really useful in terms of that approach, it, it perhaps being more collaborative and, and, a, and a cross industry um, approach too? So I think one of the things that's really different and, and the reason why I think it is important to still have events like this, be it hybrid like the event we've got today uh, or you know, ideally in person, is that you hear about what, what other people have done that's worked and honestly what other people have done that's failed right? and, and not worked because this idea of learning from one another is, is key. We talked about, you know, for years we talked about kind of IQ that was a focus and then it was EQ and how, for, and, and whether it's now learning or whether it's, you know, the, the question of, of why, then really this idea of of learning from others' uh, experiences, mistakes, what's worked is key. And, 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 and events like this give us the opportunity to, to listen. I mean, I've just come out of a, a really inspiring um, speech on, on leadership that's been given. And the, the, some of the statistics that were being presented about uh, people leaving the workforce is scary. I think that if we don't, if we don't engage on this actively, uh, we're going to lose some of the corporate knowledge and talent that we need to face the future. Well, let's hope you have some of those really useful conversations this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you for this time.